Hi guys, I am Beth and this is Read Remark. Today I am so pleased to be able to talk to you about the BookTube Prize again. This time it's the quarterfinals. Thank you so much for joining. The BookTube Prize is basically a contest put on by all of us BookTubers in which we vote through the books that we think are the best to see which one wins out. It is hosted by Robert over at Barter Hordes. I'll be sure to link to his video. And it is being presided over by many of us in Booktube Landia. For the quarterfinals, Robert narrowed it down to the books that got the most votes, and we get to vote on those. And so I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> I have a little goblin over here shaking the tree to try and distract me. Spoiler alert, it's working. Starting with number six, the lowest rated of the lot is The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock by Imogen Hermes Gower. This is a historical fiction book that kind of meanders, to be honest. I had such a hard time sticking with this one, and I felt so bad because I wanted to stay true to the contest and not DNF, did not finish. I didn't want to DNF any of the books. I wanted to give them the full shot that they all deserve else they would not be on the BookTube Prize quarterfinals list to begin with. But The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock just couldn't grab me and it got to where it was like punishment to come back to it. I had a really similar experience when I was reading Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan and I think that it's probably just a personal thing with me that that's just not the genre for me. Um, it's just not. I can't seem to get myself into it. So I finally, with just a little bit left to go, had to throw in the towel and be like, eh, eh. For the rest of these, the race gets really, really close. It was so hard. <laughs> Number five is Circe by Madeline Miller. And of course, of course Circe is good. If you are into mytholo mythology even a little bit, which I am a little bit, it is a really fun trip through the mythological ages. Circe is shunt from the rest of the gods for misusing her power, goes to live on an island and spends hundreds and hundreds of years there. And we get to see her encounters with various different gods and humans through time. Now, the thing for me that made me rate at number five and not higher was that it just spans too much. It was hard to grab onto her story at any one place and feel a real, um, oh, just that bone deep connection that sometimes you can get with a book or with a character and their story. This one seemed to be more of a bump, bump up against various places and people in time without much of it really sticking so much until the very, very end. Still good, still excellent. Through all of the mythological ah, ages. Ah, 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 hey, Lizzie. Hey, girl. Hey, sweet girl. The one I voted for number four was The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin, and I loved this book so much. Now, here's the question that it really raises for you as a reader. If you could know the exact time and day of your death, would you want to know? Would you want to know? The kids in this book decide without even being really old enough to make the decision. Sure, sure, I'll find out. And then they proceed to live the rest of their lives either rushing head first towards that date or tiptoeing around it and tiptoeing around their own lives as a result. It's beautifully told. Um, it just weaves together all these different personalities, these different trajectories in their lives. And you kind of get to see these different places in time, like when the AIDS crisis was starting to develop or the, um, the question of animal cruelty and scientific ah! testing. But it's just um, a beautifully told book. And it made me hurt in my heart a little bit to rate it number four because I feel like it deserved to be higher. But then again, so did these other books. So this is where the tough decisions come into play. No, I'm not talking crap about you. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Number three on my list is A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza. This book is surprising to me, much like Happiness by Amanata Forno was in the last round of the Book Two Prize, in that it's not a genre I normally go for. It's very quiet, it sits still in these stories and feelings that it has with this one family, but 
I think for that reason, it just made me love it all the more, this extended time and extended relationship I got to have with these characters. So it is a family in which the parents were born in India, had an arranged marriage, and then they lived in America and raised their children in America. They're also Muslim. So the story is non-linear. So we see them at different points through time the different misunderstandings, the different subtleties, um, all the little things that go into making the family structure just not as strong as it should be. So the thing that was really remarkable about this story is that you kind of see that um, in the different characters just being who they are, how it kind of bumps up against each other. For example, the son doesn't really know any boundaries. He keeps pushing, pushing, pushing forward. Meanwhile, the father, Baba, is all about boundaries. <laughs> he sets them very clearly, very defined, and can't stand it when the son pushes past them. And so their relationship is strained from the very beginning. Um, despite not necessarily disliking each other, it's just this fundamental misunderstanding that they constantly have. The book is beautiful. It's beautifully written and it's wonderful to be able to kind of sit still and spend time with the family and see them at different points through time um, in their lives and what led them to where they are now. It was really hard to decide where the rankings should lie. Photobomb of a doggy coming up. Number two is Fruit of the Drunken Tree by Ingrid Contreras Rojas. And this book is just woo wee woo woo. <laughs> it took me a minute to get into it, to be honest. I didn't think that it was gonna be a book for me, but all of a sudden I found myself completely riveted by what was going on. It's a fictional story, again, held during real life events. It is two girls living in Bogota in the time of Pablo Escobar's height of power. The two girls are very different. One of them is a maid for the family, comes from a very poor family, and then the other girl is one of the daughters of the upper middle class family for which the maid works. Both of them deal with um, horrible things going on in the community because of this backdrop of Pablo Escobar and everything that's going on with him. But when you look at the girl who is less economically sound, poor, the girl who's poor, you really see the helplessness of it and that there's just no chance for her to get out of it. And I think that's the part that really struck me the most was even for the upper middle class ones, their lives are rough. They have to leave their home. They have to leave everything they've known behind. The dad is taken prisoner. Things are rough, but they're able to get out of it and move forward. For the girl who's poor, that's just her life. That's her life, man, and she can't get out of it. And it's just, it's so sad. It's so sad. <laughs> You're silly. Okay, so here's a real bummer of a story and the reason that the voice is not going to match what you're seeing on the screen for the rest of this video, I accidentally unplugged the audio source and could not salvage what was remaining, so I'm just going to talk over this video of me. So sorry about that. So here's my number one pick for the quarterfinals booktube prize and it is A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. Now John Boyne himself is not without controversy lately. I understand that he has a new book coming out about a trans person. I believe it's called My Brother's Name is Jessica. Um, I have not read the book and so I don't feel like I have any sort of dog in this race. All I can say is I fully support the trans community, but I am not even going to enter this discussion because I wouldn't know what I'm talking about having not read the book. So I'm going to just leave that potential controversy alone and just talk about A Ladder to the Sky because I thought this book was just so wonderful. Now, unfortunately, I can't tell you much about the plot because I feel strongly that it's kind of like Fight Club in which the first rule is you don't talk about Fight Club. And the second rule is don't talk about Fight Club. Um, what I will say is that it has a character in it that you just don't like. There's not really any sort of redeeming stuff about him. Just keep in mind, not every story has to have a hero to root for. Not every story has to have characters that you identify with or that you love. Um, sometimes it's fun to read a book where you're almost getting to hate read it, where you hate the character, you hate everything they're doing, you want to clutch your pearls in shock and dismay at all the horrible things they do. 
this is the book for you to deliver on all of those things. I can't say enough good things about it. All right, so those are my picks for the quarterfinals of the BookTube Prize. I am going to be a judge as well for the semifinals, so I will be back in a couple of months with six more picks how I rated those and I can't wait to see how the other judges voted and I would love to know your thoughts on any of these books as well. Let me know what you think. I love seeing the diversity of opinions here and I love hearing from you guys. So thank you as always for watching and I will catch you next time. Bye. You what? You locked us out? It's really a tromp through all the mythological ages. You get to see Cersei and her path when she is shunt from um, the cloud where she lives with the gods.